Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Again, to my vet friends, as I said before, as, I, as you note, I always have this garb on, if you will. Get out there and get your benefits, folks. And to those families who have vets and and still have uh, you have yet to register as uh, as uh, as a vet, if you will, to get those benefits, please get them out there. It's very very important. We still have many vets that are homeless and uh, mental illness, and uh, they, they call it PTSD. But the bottom line, it's still mental illness. Uh, it, that's just another way of saying it. But but anyway, but please do that for us. Well. There's a lot of things on the table, folks. There's all sorts of things on the table. There's a lot of issues, if you will. We got the upcoming convention. That's going to be a biggie about a couple of weeks from now, and um, then that's we've got uh, we got the whole issue down south and the police situation. We got that situation. We got uh, Black Lives Matter. We got, but you know, it's, to a certain degree, and it's not about uh, a blessing of some sort. But but again, it's right before the convention. Mm-hmm. These are these are major issues, and so those are going to be discussed as far as the platform. It's going to be interesting to see what we're going to get out as a result. We've got to get them things going right, but but the, but this time around, another area that I, and that's why we're doing it this way, as opposed to dealing with these other other issues. You know, we've got an education issue. We got our kids, you know, because those are the futures that we have, and and what we see in terms of what we have now, the product of what we have now. A lot of times you're talking about kids that are out there and no jobs, no nowhere to go. Especially those kids that are under the so-called uh, under the, the below average, aspect, the poor kids, and that's across the board. Normally, a lot of times we are always speaking about the African American kids or Latino kids or whatever. It's kids across the board, poor kids, poor kids. Now you got the poor kids, you got middle class, and you got the well-to-do. Well, there's an area here that's been totally neglected. But guess where the funds are always going? The funds are going to the IE supposedly to basically to identify with that area of getting these folks uh, assimilated, if you will, in our society, and that is the jobs and this, that, et cetera, et cetera. But it always, but the bottom line, we still have the same problem, ongoing, 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 and nothing happens. So what we're going to do? We're going to we're going to look at Oregon here, the largest school district in the state of Oregon, which is Portland Public Schools. And we're fortunate to have with us a gentleman who happens to be a representative of the public. He's not just a school board member, he's a representative of the public. He gets he got elected and he represents the public. Too often we tend to forget that. And from my experience and my history of the school board has always been the fact that um, they're just there and, uh, and, and and the administration tend to run and has to say so on in this, this, that, and the other. And, and it's so involved, you don't really have the time trying to figure out what is going on but you got your representation there your representative there they look like they were just staff members but yet not but not really representing us the, the public well it's very very important and uh, so we've got it we just had like in we have we, we, we've got the opportunity here to uh, to speak with a, a board member that as far as I'm concerned has been just laid it out we're going to give him all the time in the world to say his hand but but it, but anyway his his definition and, and, and basically the status of the school system, the, the status of the school, the kids, the status of the kids <clears throat> have been re- reflected in two of our major newspapers, actually three of them. We had the Tribune, Portland Tribune, we had the Willamette Week, and we had the Oregonian. And uh, the gentleman that was, was pretty well profiled, probably the only one that was really representing the public, the people, if you will, are representing the kids was a gentleman by the name of Paul Anthony. He's sitting up here on my, on my left on the screen, but on to my right. And um, and then we've got another activist that's sitting up here, uh, Stu Edmonds, and he happened to have been a, sort of like on the on the campaign trail with me. Just recently, he ran for city council, and I ran for mayor, and we had the opportunity again to knock on the doors and figure out what the problems were. And he too has has a compassion for the kids and a concern for the kids, and so he's on board with us. And we're going to sit down and we're going to take the time give give the representative from the public, from this particular area, from the Portland, Portland area, the opportunity to, to one, share uh, his, um, his definition, rationale, and whatever about the concerns of the kids, and that's what, and that's what we're going to be doing today. 
Paul, thanks very much for being with us. Oh, thank you very much for okay, having here again, Bruce. Okay, I appreciate it. And hey, my friend Stu, Bruce, as usual. It's a pleasure. And thank good. you. And hopefully you'll run next time around, too. Okay. Thank you. All right, buddy. Okay. Well, Stu, look, what I'm going to do, let me let me just read this first entry here in the, <clears throat> from the Willamette Week. I thought it was really great. It, it, went on, it went on to say that it was called Equal Time. It's a really neat piece. I'm, I don't know if you can see this. I don't know if you guys can see this piece. But anyway, it's... Uh, the issue that this particular issue was in the Willamette Week, July 6, okay, 2006, which is the latest issue of the Willamette Week. A brilliant article. And but this is what it says it says a school board member complains to the feds about the quality of education for minority kids in Portland. It was the moment Portland, Portland school board member Paul Anthony had been waiting for. On January 26, on a table in Superintendent Carol Smith's office, Anthony placed evidence of a serious problem. The marketed disparities between the classes Portland Public Schools offers white students and those it makes available to their black and Latino peers. I'll add just poor kids across the board. Too often we tend to forget about the fact we've got poor kids across the board. White kids too. Got me? Mm -hmm. uh, he showed Smith uh, 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 spreadsheets indicating students at predominantly white schools were getting as much as three times as many course options as schools where most of the students are black or Latinos. Anthony asked Smith to take a closer look at the numbers. She wiggled her fingers at, at, at them and giggled and said, I know all about them. Anthony recalled. She completely fails to get the point. Let's talk about the point, Paul. Well, the point is, like parents in Portland Public Schools have known for forever, children in poorer schools are getting fewer course offerings. They're getting less quality. And they're doing less well. And because they get fewer options right up front, they continue to do less well as they progress through the school system and then through life. Effectively, we're tracking students and we're setting them up to fail. Mm -hmm. What I was able to get as a board member, lots of people had been looking for this for a long time and had not been able to get it was a complete list of all of the course offerings across the district, where they are, and I was able to sort them out. And like we had all suspected, when you look at the schools, first of all, the K-8 schools, mm -hmm. K-8 schools that were really overwhelmingly imposed by Vicki Phillips on communities that were vulnerable, communities where people were poor, mm -hmm. communities that had high, high percentages of parents of color, mm -hmm. communities that could not mount an effective political resistance. When you look at those schools, their course offerings are terrible. In many cases, the elective offerings that they have for middle school students are three classes, or four classes, or five. In some cases, those have been courses that were helping a teacher, hmm. helping out in the cafeteria, basically doing like janitorial work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you go to middle schools that tend to be concentrated in areas that are wealthier and whiter, middle schools that are very large, very successful, they're offering 20 or 30 elective offerings. It's an enormous disparity. And when you have very few options for what to take, these children end up taking classes where they are sitting uninspired, unengaged, spending their whole day looking at books, looking at working on worksheets, looking at the blackboard, not able to get their hands on anything, mm -hmm. not able to do anything that's tangible, mm -hmm. not, any, not able to do anything that they want to do. And when that happens, kids tune out, they give up, and by the time they walk in the door to high school on the first day, they're just hanging around waiting to drop out. Mm -hmm. We've set them up to fail. Uh, I work in finance, so I tend to be a numbers guy. Mm -hmm. 
lots of our K-8 schools have three or four elective offerings. If you go to West Sylvan, out on the west side, West Sylvan had 21 this last year. If you go to Beaumont, Beaumont had 31. Huge disparity in numbers. If you look at our high schools, we've got five large comprehensive high schools in this city. Mm -hmm. There's Lincoln, Wilson, Cleveland, Grant, and Franklin. Of those five, Lincoln is only six and a half percent larger than any of the other four. But Lincoln has 43 percent more programs at a minimum than any of those other four. We are seriously out of whack in this town. Those are some of the numbers, but here's also the reality. This last year I went out and I toured Lane Middle School, which is in one of our poorest neighborhoods out in Lower Southeast. The principal there is doing a great job. Lane has really made some terrific strides in this last year. But she took me around, she wanted me to see all of the school, and she stopped, she wanted me to see the band room. And the kids played for me, it was very nice. Mm -hmm. But then she asked them if there was one thing that they wanted a school board member to know. And this little African-American girl, in the middle of a band, she's sitting there playing the clarinet. She puts her hand up and she says, I wish that we got to have the same kind of programming that I hear they get to have at Mount Tabor. Hmm. Which was? Oh, kind of like. Mount Tabor's a wealthier and certainly wider school. Mm -hmm. So that really makes the emotional case. Mm -hmm. You can't not answer that. So um, as we went through the budget process, I tried to get this included. It was completely shut down. Uh, that's uh, really one of the two ways that the board can influence district. It's approving the budget. It's hiring the superintendent. Since the budget process was closed, I filed a complaint with the feds. Hmm. Hmm. What, were your other, what, were the, what, what were your colleagues, what were your other board members? How did they react? Did you, did, were you able to make the presentation to the board? A... I've sent I sent all the material to individuals, th them you know individually, and I put it out on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And we can talk about what influence that yeah. had also. But it's an enormous number of courses. It's an overwhelming amount of data. This district offers over 3,700 courses across the, across the city. Um, I could not get people engaged with that. Hmm. I'm hoping for a better response from the Department of Education. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you know, when you start thinking about the, the, the courses that were offered and the, the, the disparity between the two entities aspect, a lot yep. of times we're acquainted with the whole idea of voc ed. Yep. When you talked about the hands-on, spend a little bit more time in giving the, the impact that, uh, that that has on, on poor kids, you know, the hands-on, how it t gets them motivated, if you will, and develop the enthusiasm to want to read. And, oh, yeah. And, and, you know. Well, now, that's not just poor kids. Right. That's across kids the across the board. Across the board, yes, across the board. And having the chance to get your hands on something, mm -hmm. just like you were saying, to see and to feel why it is that you need to know math, why it is that you need to be able to read and write well. That has a huge, huge impact on kids all across all income levels. And it can really be a terrific pathway to success. Benton High School is still our one good example. I know it very well. My oldest daughter is going to be a senior there. My two youngest are going to be freshmen this fall. Benson has successfully turned out people who go on to be doctors, 
and lawyers and engineers, uh, people who lead enormous companies. And they succeed because Benson teaches them how to work with other people, which is enormously important. It teaches them the value of what they're manipulating and how, 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 the, how the book learning, mm -hmm. how the math and the writing play into that, how they can let you do better. And they convince them of the value of education. That's, again, that's one thing to know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's another thing to really feel. Mm -hmm. And that's what hands-on education does. Mm -hmm. um, we are starting to slowly add that across the district. Why? Actually, well, why? Because we know that it increases graduation rates. I don't know, but why it, has it been so long in coming? Because the Benson's been around oh, a, a long time. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's been a very luxury. People were constantly trying to get in there. But what about these other kids? Yeah. Well, there are a couple of things. It's expensive to start. You can't have one person supervising 35 children when they're all working with lathes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm doesn't work to have 35 kids all working with drill presses at the same time with only one person supervising them. You have to bring down the student-teacher ratio. You have to equip it. Uh, that can be terrifically expensive. But also it's been hard to get people. That's starting to change now. Hmm. It's a wonderful thing. As the baby boomers are retiring, Many of them retiring from very successful jobs, careers, mm -hmm. people in high tech, people in the trades. Many of those people are retiring at ridiculously young ages. They still want something to do. They need to stay engaged. And a lot of them have been wanting to teach. We're starting to find that we can get fabulous teachers by going and working with the companies and the trade unions mm -hmm. and getting them to encourage people to come in and apply because we can get those people mm -hmm. credentialed, we can get them trained to be able to manage kids in a classroom and it's working out fabulously. Mm -hmm. Now I say that we're adding these things slowly, actually we're adding them terrifically quickly. We've tripled the number <laughs> of these classes that we've got in the district in about two years and fabulous but these are spread out across nine high school well eight high schools Jefferson unfortunately doesn't have any I'm working on that one mm -hmm. but that gives us some opportunities mm -hmm. It doesn't give us the voc ed that we're talking about mm -hmm. because the way to get people into, you know, from that to build into good jobs, good careers, right. is to be working with trade unions. And so far, we have not done a very good job of pulling those trade unions into relationship with us. That's something else I'm working on. Well, tell me this now. What about what about the engagement? Uh, uh, whether as far as your other board members are there were they having the same feeling as, as if to say what i what i was reading about in the article you were the only one that was pushing this issue and they were saying what are you doing why why, why would you be suing us oh well yeah so, oh yeah and the brass tax answer there is that the kids are more important yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> over and over again. The kids are more important. Now, there are always reasons to delay, to put off a decision. And people will probably be raising those going forward. But the fact of the matter is, it's not going to be solved by keeping the issue in-house. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This has been building far longer than the current superintendent. Mm -hmm. This has really been building for about as long as there have been public schools in Portland. Hmm. And the only way that we're going to get a fix is if we go outside the system. Mm -hmm. Now, 
many other people on the board see the same problem. Actually coming up with a solution for it is going to be difficult because what we have to do, the thing that is perpetuating all of this inequity, is sticking to the formula in funding the schools, the dollars follow the student. If you fund by enrollment, always, your largest schools are going to have far more options than your smallest schools. Mm -hmm. And we are blessed with a terrific variety of sizes of schools in this city. We have some, like Jefferson, that will hold more than 3,000 kids. We have some that will barely hold 300. When you have those kinds of disparities, you can't fund by enrollment. Mm -hmm. What we have to do is decide what programs we are going to offer at each school and then fund those programs and stick to it regardless of what the enrollment is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's something that Steve Buell's been calling for on the board for years. I think he's absolutely right. What I am hoping is that this is going to be the hammer that will push it through. Okay, okay. Stu, want to wheel in on some of this? What do you think before we get into another subject area? Well, um, I, uh, my background was uh, in high school. I did a lot of project-based learning. I was a woodworker in high school, and I feel like... Um, that helped get me get me through school. Uh, it was really uh, it was a really important component of my education, and I just feel like we ought to have enough offerings. So, cast. I mean, I have this thing about graduation rates, and I put out a booklet for the mayor's office that said 80% in four years, and that was cast aside. And I um, I feel like uh, the more offerings we have, the more kids we're going to capture. I mean, kids need to have um, have be inspired, they need to get into a place where they love to learn. And um, regardless of what they're, uh, you know, whether they're taking English and history or metalworking or whatever, it doesn't really matter. We just need to keep them in school and loving and learn, learning to, or loving to learn. Um, I, one of my housing projects, Case on Chaco Haas, I went out and there was a homeless family uh, that we j just, uh, were, got housed and there was a girl there who was doing dragons, uh, these multicolored dragons, and she was at Benson and uh, taking the train to Benson every day. And I said, great, that's mm. fantastic. Um, you know, she uh, she's going to go on to graduate. She's really excited about what she's doing at school and making friends. And that's what matters mm -hmm. um, to me. So um, I um, I'm very excited about uh, expanding our offerings because I'd like to see our graduation rates start, you know, get let's get to 80% and then let's get to 95% and then of course the state wants to be at 100% uh in 2025. But we have to we have to keep our foot on the accelerator and it's all about the kids. Let's let's not worry, let's get these adult issues uh you know the disagreements among adults um out of the way and keep focusing on the kids because that's what's the most that's our that's our city's future mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As, as it goes some good points because i, I can think about myself i too am a, a sort of a student of, of voc ed if you will mm -hmm. i was in the metal part forging and this that and the other yeah and, and uh kind of interesting i i uh, i want a i want a uh, trip to dearborn michigan the really? Ford Motor Company had put together. I spun I spun a chafing dish out of aluminum, and I competed na nationwide, and I won. <laughs> Congratulations, you know, Bruce. Mean, not a bad deal. Not, yeah, not a bad, not deal. A bad deal. And, and the reason why I brought that point up is that um, it gave me all the things that he was talking about: the mm -hmm. hands-on situation, mm -hmm. the enthusiasm mm -hmm. to want to read. Mm -hmm. You know, because you had to you understand what micrometers are, uh, math, how ma how math actually related to whatever you were doing, things of that nature. And, and we need that more today yeah. because our oh, kids don't have that. Their parents, a lot of times, they, they, they were lost, too, because when you think about Benson and when you think about the schools here within the Port and Metropolitan area, they didn't have access to that. Yeah. See, they didn't have access to that. So they couldn't, the kids couldn't go home, and mom and dad couldn't basically help them out with their studies. Right. And yeah. so, therefore, they are out there on their own. So all of a sudden, we got kids out on the street. Now we call them gang members. We got all yeah. this, this, that, and the other. It's ridiculous. They're kids. And we're supposed to, if you will, 
give them that education that they need during mm -hmm. those formative years. Give them the best education they have so they can get into society and, 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 and assimilate, as we talked about this piece. Mm -hmm. Fair? Oh, yeah. No, that's absolutely right. Now, here's a story. This is completely true. It sounds too it, it sounds too appropriate. I got you going now. Oh yeah. <laughs> and this is true for over and over again, not just for Benson, mm -hmm. not just for Vocad, but for kids across the district. And also I have found this true over and over again working in business. Mm -hmm. My oldest daughter, when she was a year old, she could barely walk. Her first complete sentence. I need tools. Wow. She was trying to take part of the vacuum cleaner. Yes. <laughs> over and over again, <laughs> this is what kids are saying to yeah. us. Yeah. I need tools. I need to know how I can influence the world. I need to know how I can get along in the world. I need to know how I can make an impact. Kids today, you know, yeah. your little girl yeah. out uh, on, on the east side with her dragons. And Lance, uh, yeah. Yeah. She was finding a way to have an impact on the world. Um, but where were these yeah. other folks? Where are your board members? Where is the administration? I mean, that's, that's why we hired these people, right? Yeah. Well, we're, yeah. What's the Now, deal? that we're adding slowly, but... Yes, it's having I mean, a disproportionately successful impact the wealthier and wider you get because we lose kids in the middle school grades. Mm -hmm. This is something that we've, you know, Benson seen for decades. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly yeah. what you were talking about. Yeah. Years ago, decades ago, yeah. kids would apply to Benson and they'd come in with portfolios. Yeah. They would have sh shops. In, the, in their garages, their fathers would work on, mm -hmm. on them. Or they'd have access to shop in middle school. They could put together projects. See, come, you know, they would come to Benson, see what I can do. Mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. do this, I, I wanna that. do more. Give me the tools, mm -hmm. <laughs> I can do mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. Teach me more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we don't have that anymore. And mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's killing our graduation rate. Yes, it is. Yes, yes. It's leading to huge opportunity gap. It's creating all kinds of social problems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, far beyond just kids hanging out on the street. Right, right, right. Let me throw something else out to you. Yep. Let's go to another subject area. Not too long ago, I happened to have been a part of that process. The whole issue with lead. The whole issue with lead, that was a major, major issue. Yes. And uh, again, I was involved early on when they had custodians that, in fact, would, were actually checking on those kinds of situations. I mean, they were there. They were very, very important to the system. Yeah. I, I made them, I, actually, as far as, as far as chain of command, I've got the kid, you know what I mean? Then you got the teacher, mm -hmm. and then you got the custodian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. then, it, then it's the basic administration and then the board aspect of it. But the, but the, but the thing is, is that... Um, uh, they kept that in check. They got rid of the custodians. They yeah. got rid of the custodians, and it's kind of interesting that the unions that were representing the custodians that were already there basically fought the custodians that were there and brought in other entities. And all due respect, uh, these were uh, the SEIU did something else. Uh, you know, we, we did the immigration peace aspect of it, but they took them out, right? Remember that? Uh, well, no, I think you're getting the wrong end of the stick. The district was much more at fault at that I than that. you were. Oh, is that right, really? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, that was uh, a very, very foolish decision. I, I was on the school district. On, on the school district. On the board. Yes. On the board. Yeah. Okay. Ultimately, okay. the responsibility rests okay. with the board. Okay. But the but SEIU was there, and, and my point is. Oh that, yes, they represent the custodians, they, and they and they represent the other. Folks they fought the us. No, well, no, they yeah. they fought the district, and they prevailed, yeah. as they should have. Yeah. Uh, we were violating the contract. Yeah. And. So the district deal. had to give all those uh, and so for years, so for years the kids have been drink, drinking that lead. Yeah. Now <laughs> we're we're grossly understaffed. Okay. It's really horrible. Okay. Um, there are again numbers five 
different levels at which a building can be maintained, and they're defined. Goes from one to five, best to worst. We are at number four, which is defined at moderately dingy. Okay. <laughs> Are we talking about the lid now? Well, I mean, we're I, talking about our everything. everything. We're talking about everything. 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 And this thing, this gets to lead because when it's moderately dingy, what that means is that they are staffed so thin that they can't do everything that you would expect they can do. There's going to be dirt on the floor when it's moderately dingy because they can't sweep all the time. It means, and I kid you not, waste baskets will have a sour smell. Well, I agree. That, that's I agree. that's in the list. But yeah, Paul, you just go Paul, right down. Back in and the early uh, days, yeah. they had. I mean, my point is that those custodians were there. We oh, didn't yeah. have dingy baskets and whatever. I mean, no, we didn't. The, the lawns were cut. The this, that, and the other. Yep. And the school district got more money from the feds. Yep. Especially if the minority students and this, that, and that. they got more money. Uh, mm -hmm. Superintendents are making two hundred eighty thousand or something like that in perks. And, uh, I mean, it's just more money, and yet and still we got less service. What's up? Yeah. Well, we've got oh, we've got more kids, and Do really? the, yeah, oh yeah, our enrollment's going up. Uh, but to concentrate on lead, right? If you're staffed that thin, the janitors don't have time to go around and flush out all of the drinking fountains and all of the sinks. But that they, takes time. But they that was what they that? were doing before. Yeah, before yeah. they were doing it. Yeah, before. Yep. But now they don't do it. No. Jesus. They haven't been able to do that. And then what, what happens to the kids? Well, <laughs> the kids haven't had good water to drink. Now, so, who's responsible? so far, oh, oh, that's the school board. That's us. Right, that's right, absolutely right, on right. us. Now, so far, what we are finding is that we are benefiting from our own incompetence. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Very, very few children are testing with high lead levels. And it's my own experience from talking with my own children. It's my experience from talking with all kinds of teachers across the district. They aren't testing high on lead because the water is so awful in the system, they won't drink it. Mm, mm, mm. Which is another problem. We know that many children are suffering from chronic dehydration. But those parents that were there, that you know, when yep. making that presentation, they were concerned about their kids. Oh, they certainly should be. They were concerned. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, they said, "Hey, look, this lady's got to go." Yeah. They and I noticed in this article, you, you you said that. I mean, the whole idea. We thought maybe that that was taken care of. It was just a matter of when was she leaving. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Carolyn Smith. And then all of a sudden, I read the article. And you're the only person that basically was there to listen to what was being said by the parents. Well. Who. Yeah. Who you represent. You represent us, right? Yep. Well, the whole board was there. I think the whole board was there. But. But they didn't hear. They didn't get it. Well, no. Uh, and I'm standing as the odd man out because about three weeks ago, the superintendent sent out an email to all the parents in the district, basically went to the whole city, announcing that she was going to stay for another year, fulfill the last year of her contract. Uh, she said she would be retiring at the end of that. But she said that she was staying because she had been asked to by the board. By the board? Yes. Well, there had been no public discussion. I was not involved in that at all. I didn't even find out about it until uh, it went out to the press. So that boxed me into a corner. You've got a nice picture of me right there in right, a cage. Right. And the yeah. jungle gym. Yeah. <laughs> See, I've been boxed into a corner. Yeah, but who uh, represents... And I, I'm, yeah. I'm having some problems here. You know, I, I, I spoke. <laughs> yes. I got, I got, I've got grandkids in the school. Yep. After we, the parents, spoke... We, we were expecting her to be leaving. She she broke, as far as I'm concerned, she didn't do her job. She got to the point that, hey, we said, hey, look, she's got to go. We said that. Mm -hmm. And the expectation was that it was just a matter of just what day was she going? As far as I was concerned, she was going to be gone the next week. And, but I was still concerned about my grandkid. No one even reached out to me. Mm -hmm. To me. 
and said, well, okay, Bruce, Mr. Bashar, uh, uh, let's tell you, let, let us tell you what's the update on Peninsula. Nobody said nothing to me. Nobody called me. Mm-hmm. What about all those other parents mm-hmm. that were there? Were yeah. they called? Were they given the opportunity? What we were looking, waiting for was, hey, who's going to be the next administrator to take care of this problem with the land? Yeah. What is the update? Yeah. We still haven't gotten an update. Yeah. They're still testing the water. Yeah. And some kids are still drinking the water. Some well, people, no, they aren't well, drinking the bottled, water that's coming said, out of the pipes. They said bottled, they said yeah. bottled water. Yeah. Aspect of it. But then there's some concerns about whether or not bottled water is good for you. Yeah, there is that. I do worry <laughs> so, about that. So, but so my yeah. point is that someone should be more articulate than that. I'm paying for that. I, it shouldn't be my job to figure out what kind of water they drink. And as far as I'm concerned, you call the plumbers and bring at least a pipe in there and say, this is good water. Yeah. Well. Fair? Yeah, that's pretty fair. I mean, I'd I'm on your, I'm on your side. Right? Oh, I, mean, I know you are. That's why we're doing this yeah. program. The oh, rest yeah. of these folks aren't doing the job. My point is that when is Carolyn Smith going to go? I mean, are we going to have to keep... I mean, the other thing, what about this bond measure that's coming? we got about a billion dollar bond, right? 750,000, I believe, right? Million. 50 million. million. Or, sorry, million, million not 50, thousand. 50 million. We yes. got this bond number. Million. And, 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 and they're, <laughs> asking, zero. they're asking for more money. Few zero. Yeah. More money. What about the kids? Yeah. Well, we need more money. For what? For the kids. What <laughs> that's we what I'm saying. For. But, but is yeah. it going to the kids? Well, yeah. And that's the problem. It's, it's not putting you on the going. spot now. I mean, oh, no, no, I'm no. It's get, fine. Here. Stoop, now, bail me out there. You, well, <laughs> <laughs> you've got, uh, you're running several different rabbits there. I am. Which is fine. I am. I have to. That's your privilege. Yes, right. right. It's your show. <laughs> but. <laughs> no. They have to go. I don't want to go down to that school district. Yeah. I don't want to go to the board members. You know what I mean? I, I will take some folks. <laughs> That's good. Something we, has I'd, to happen. I'd appreciate hearing from you myself, and I'd appreciate hearing from anybody you want to bring. Now, as far as the lead goes, we've got 94 different facilities in this district. Okay. Each one of those probably has at least 120 to 150 different outlets for water in it. And, you know, high schools, it's a couple hundred. High schools, you know, are huge. Right, 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 right. It takes a while to test all those. Yeah, but why, And why we're should... getting through it as, quick, as quickly okay, as we can. Why should the kids go to school while you're having this lead problem? As far as I'm concerned, they shouldn't go in that school until, until that problem is fixed. Yeah. Well, the only way we're going to fix that is if we pass a bond. What? Yep. Oh, you know. We got, we got no r- wiggle room in the operating budget. But are they just using that as a way of saying, give more money? Well. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. That's you what know. I'm feeling. Well, it's fine to feel that they way. They took this lead hear, problem. Yeah. Everybody should have been fired as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> it took, now they're taking the lead problem, and all yep. of a sudden the money jumps up. And people still asking, what did you do with this other money? Yeah. We got this art tax thing, the same thing. Yeah. Well, the other money, now there's the bond money. And that we're My rebuilding. Money. Yeah, your money. <laughs> your money. We're, four schools. Roosevelt, Franklin, Grant, and Fabian. Now, those, all those systems are going to be new. And it's not just that the water lines are going to be clear. And there isn't going to be any light in them. And I'm standing over them with a stick, making sure. Yeah, but right no now lead they're drinking in. lead, Paul. Oh, yeah. Right now they, they're drinking lead. It, it, yeah. it says poison. That's what I heard <laughs> at the meeting. And those mothers are mad, buddy. Trust oh, me. They sh- and they should be. And I don't see no bond measure being passed. Yeah. I mean, I can't support a bond measure. Right well, now. we are not going to be having letting those kids drink that water anymore. Now, it's going to take time to fix that probably going to take several years to fix time? that. I mean, in all due respect, I've talked to some plumbers. Okay? Yeah. You can go down to the trade, the trade union, the plumbers. Oh, yeah. Just like just like anything else. Just just common sense. Yep. If they're going to be drinking water, and yep. there's a lot of water that goes into the schools, if you will. Yeah, oh, yeah. Just bring in a good pipe, one pipe, at least one pipe coming from the main source, where well, at least they can get the drinking water from. And then fix the rest of the stuff. But let the kids drink good water. Yeah. It's very important. Not doing it. No. Well, what we have to do is get in good drinking water. That's yes, right. and here's the other thing. This is 
it's even more of a pain. Yes. Technically. You got to get good, clean water into the kitchens, so they're using mm -hmm. that to prepare food. Right, exactly. What we had to do at the end of this last year when the lead crisis hit, we had to bring in a completely new set of food. Everything had to be pre-washed. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, just common sense would tell you just bring in yeah. clean water through a pipe. Well, what? What? We, we've what? got we've got a long ways to go with that pipe, and we've got all kinds of possible lead for it to get through before it comes out the tap. Now, we know that a lot of our problems, or it's starting to become very clear, I think, that a lot of our problems are not from the pipes at all. They're coming from the fixtures. They're coming from the faucets. They're well, they just learned the that. They just learned that after we start yelling at them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that was already well, there. Well, yeah. Kids, that, were, kids were drinking out of anything where they were going in the bathroom and getting water from, oh, yeah. those, from those damaged whatever, right? Yeah. Until those mm, parents things. did the yelling that day, nobody knew anything about faucets. Yeah. Well, fair. No, ac actually, that's not fair either. Who, who, because we'd been testing. For how long? Oh, 2001. 2001. We, we'd started a big testing routine in 2001. And they there knew was it, some so, testing. So they knew in 2001 that. that the lead was bad. That was lead in the in the pipes. Yes. A problem. Yeah. And, the, and, now, and no one said anything. Well, the, actually, they did say a little bit about that publicly then. And they started some fixes, and well, then they found out more. They, you know, they'd do a little more testing, and they'd find some. Did a little more testing, they'd find some, and s mostly they were okay. staying on okay. top of what they found and were fixing it. But the problem is, you can't test once and know that you're good for, you know, the rest of all time going mm -hmm. forward, mm -hmm. because of course, now as everybody knows, oh, everybody's yeah. here and our water here is so corrosive to plumbing. Hey. It's, you know, Whew. because it, it's not treated. Well, look, the, I, the, the I, pH I, is... I don't want to cut you off. Right. I want to make yep. sure I get this oh, sure. as a critique. As, but you know what? In all due respect, I guess the thing I was like, well, I want, we want to thank you for being there. Oh. So you, you have basically said, hey, parents, you better get to those school boards. Yeah. You better go, you better come back and have another, you need to get back in the front of those podiums. Yep. And put demand and support you, oh. and and right, in all due respect, call your congressman. I mean, that's where we are right now. I mean, you've got that, you've got that, that so-called proposal, right, with the feds right now. Right? Oh yeah. They should call their their respective representative, right, and say, get this thing at the front of the line. Fair. Well, they okay. could do that, yes. But what we need even more is we need people to get a hold of their state legislature. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and go to the school board meetings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do some more yelling. Yeah. I'll tell. Uh, okay. And then yeah. what about the Carolyns? But you're not going to be. So you're not going to be doing anything about the superintendent, right? You've well, asked that. Your other board members are not saying anything. Yeah. I'm one of seven. If they want to give her the, <laughs> if they want to give her the two hundred sixty thousand, I mean, I, they're going to give it to her. Why have her there? What's going to happen to the kids? Give her the two sixty. Get her out of there. I mean, they're going to give it to her anyway. I mean, she's well, not. What's she going to be doing? She's going to be looking, as as the paper said, the Oregonian said, she's going to be looking for another job for another year and, and still getting paid for it. Well, I think it's even simpler than that. Talk to me. I think that the superintendent needs to go. When? Be immediately. Okay. Because she has been in that position for nine years. Right. And these problems not just lead these problems with programming right all this thing these problems with environmental health they have all been building for all those nine years mm -hmm. and as far as i am concerned mm -hmm. the rest of the board is taking the position that we can continue to do the same thing wow. and it get a different result and this wow. is the definition of institutional insanity. Wow, wow. Well, my friend, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I, I, is there a mic? Is there another mic? You're the activist. We're part of the deal anyway. <laughs> is there another mic that we can yell? What do you, what do you say about this? Well, you're, you're, I mean, we have. I'm going to close with you. I was, uh, <laughs> thanks. Um, we, uh, I was on the uh, 2011 school bond on one side of the fence and on the other side of the fence for the 2012 school bond. And, you know, our, our you know, our, 
my parents' generation, our parents' generations, uh, they built new schools. And then before that, back in the 1920s, they built new schools. And here we are with, you know, schools that are 60 to 110 years old mm -hmm. and, and just they they all need replacing mm -hmm. and uh, this is just a huge huge issue and we have what what's the number now we were at 85 schools that need full replacement mm -hmm. and um, and it's not just lead in the water it's radon yes. it's asbestos it's I'm, seismic I'm agreeing with we you. have uh, we have a lot of health issues around and safety issues around our schools so we need to build trust within the school district and we need to figure out how to how to spend our money as wisely as humanly possible, and we need to get on with it. We need to get new facilities for our children um, that are safe and uh, that are conducive for learning. And um, so we need to, again, it's all about the children, and that's what we ought to focus on. I agree with you. In, yeah. fact, in fact, I even I even agree to the point that I think if you go back 20 years ago and started figuring out how much money has come to this particular district, we could have built those schools twice over. If you hear what I'm saying. Oh, Bruce, no. What? No. All the no. money that's been ripped off in, the, in this school district? No. Kids no. failing. They've been sending money more and more. Every time you turn around, it was, quote, let's get more money because the minority kids are, are failing and this, that, and the other. Let's, let's, let's. We've been getting cut for 30 years. 30 years. This district's yeah. been getting less and less, except the last couple of years, less and less every year for 30 years. Major five. And then 47 and 50, okay. they really knock the legs out from under Portland Public Schools. And what we have been doing since, exactly like what Stuart was just saying, we have been living off of the largesse of our parents and our grandparents. Okay. We have been squandering our inheritance. Mm -hmm. We have not been able to invest in schools because we don't have the money. We've had to put what dollars we have into keeping teachers in the classrooms. We've been trying to keep down class size. But the failure but, rate, but the failure rate oh, yeah. in public no, schools, no. Part of it, outside no. of the yep. largest school district in this state, they got vocab, they've got brand new schools, the whole nine yards. But the money follows the kids, and more money follows the kids here in this area than outside of the deal. What's the deal? Oh, no, that's not true. Oh, really? Oh, no. I'm getting no. there. I mean, e <laughs> every year, a half a billion dollars in property taxes leaves the city and goes to fund schools in other parts of the state. From this? $500 from this, million. From this city? From Portland. From yep. Portland. Yep. Oh, wow. That's the first time we've heard that. Oh, are we going to get that money back, Paul? <laughs> I'm not holding my breath, Bruce. Wow. Well, look, yeah. you got to come back here again. I mean, right? You bet. You got to come you back bet. here again. I mean, I, I hate to, all due respect, to, I mean, I got a little excited about it. I'm going to get more excited about it because it's about the kids. It's you know, a really gonna, important talking, issue. It's a very, very important issue. I mean, yeah. the way we're looking at our kids today, we're naming them all kinds of gang members and this, yeah. this, that, mm -hmm. and the other. And then we got guns on the streets. We got drugs now. Just anybody can do anything they want to do. We got problems. We got it crisis. starts with schools. It starts with schools. And housing. And what are, what are the yeah. futures going to look like? Okay. Well, look here. We're going to go on and take a short break here. And I'm going to see if I can bring my critique folks to come on here. And we're going to chat for a moment. We only have about a few more minutes. But anyway, thanks again. You're I'm going to have welcome. you back on. Seriously. Thank oh, you. Hope, I wasn't so hard <laughs> on you, was it? <laughs> no. <laughs> he was. First, okay. I was... Thank you, sir. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. We'll take a short break, folks, and we'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Welcome back, folks. Hey, look here. We've got we've got a major topic. We got about ten minutes or so. I've got these two guys who've been sitting around just basically looking at the show and sort of listening and kind of getting a feel of what's what problem is. It's a huge problem. I mean, I tried to get as much out of the the only board members, as far as I'm concerned, I have respect for. Uh, we, we still have a lot of things to do. But anyway, I've got Bob Williams here. I got Bob. You've seen Bob here before. You you've seen Scott here before. I just throw it right on in, guys. What do you think, Scott? Let's start off. What do you think? Our education system. Well, in the state of Oregon, um, and from where I stand inside yes. the state capitol, that building is frequently referred to as the house the OEA built, uh, that being the Oregon Education Association. And the fact of the matter is, is that the teachers union has been one of the most powerful political entities in this state for decades. Back when Ted Kulangoski was governor, his chief of staff was a former lobbyist for the OEA. And so few entities in Oregon have gotten as much of what they've wanted as often as they've wanted as the teachers union. And I'm not an anti-teacher either. My dad spent the second half of his career as a teacher. You know, so I, I grew up with But that. where are the kids in all of this stuff in the legislature? Are, are, do they understand what, we, what we're looking at here as far as the futures? Well, you hear all that discussion all the time. It's for the children. It's for the children. Uh, none of that money gets to the children, though. Mm. You know, I mean, right, it's, right. it'd be quite different <laughs> if that were the case. So, I mean, essentially the only thing that the teachers union can say that they haven't gotten is a repeal of the property tax limitations that voters decided on their own mm -hmm. uh, to enact back in the 1990s. Wow. And uh, what would happen if they hadn't done that? Well, you'd probably have people, especially elderly people, being taxed out of their homes. Would their performance be any better at the like school Like they're doing level? now, like they're doing now. You know, here's Carol Smith. She gets to retire off into the sunset on her own terms with a golden parachute. Mm -hmm. And she's going to make more in retirement than the average person in the state makes working 40 to 60 hours a week. Jesus That's Jesus where the money's Christ. going. Wow. It's to wow. paying personnel costs. Wow. And the fact that she's able to stick around for another year, she should be fired immediately. <laughs> exactly. Either exactly. she didn't know, which I, I think it's been proven in the press otherwise, she didn't know, which means she's incompetent and should be fired, or she knew full well, which means that she should be fired. Yep, yep, I yep. don't see any other way around this. There's reasons that I live in Wilsonville. Yeah, yeah. You know, that school district club. is one of the better ones in the state. Well, yeah. Bob's getting ready to move from Clackamas to Portland. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Even though, so, Bob, so what's your reaction to this whole piece? What do you think? Real well, I, I was sitting and I was listening to this, and I was like, man, am I glad I live in Clackamas. Yeah, you know, exactly what I think. even though everything is not Pichadori and Clackamas, yeah. it's much better than it is here. And I was sitting there and I was writing this down. I said, we have schools like Lake Oswego, Estacada, uh, Camby, Lake, uh, Lake Ridge, and Clackamas. All new schools. Yeah, Sandy. Sandy, Sandy High School's pretty new. All new schools. Wilsonville. I, I mean, I, I coach, I referee basketball and I go to these. these. I come to Jefferson. I come to Grant. I come to Roosevelt. Uh, Marshall, uh, Lincoln, no hot water. What? Wow. No, hot water. no hot water. Wow. I mean, ask any referee. We most of the time we can't take a shower after the game, Jesus. or we take it in cold water. Oh, I'm not taking a shower uh, in cold water. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and I'm like, this is unreal. Well, then I heard something about it. But give us more money, and then you'll have hot yeah, water. Said, yeah, but we yeah. keep giving you more money, but, and we still but, don't have but, hot but water. I think I missed we it. gave our superintendent a 30% pay raise. Suppose, did, did I miss something when the guy said, that, when, when Paul said $500 million was being taken out of this district and given to someone else? Maybe we thank you. Did it go to, <laughs> hey, geez. if that's true, we thank you. I mean, I have never heard, heard that, that before. I, mean, I, didn't, I, I never heard that yeah, one. I've never I mean, heard that either, but that's a frequent refrain, refrain here in Portland is yeah. that, oh, gee, I mean, we, we would have better stuff if we weren't subsidizing the whole rest right. of the state. It's like right. you're also insisting on policies that are keeping the rest of the state let poor. Me, exactly. Let me give you and one that as a member of the TriMed board that we tackle, and that is getting the kids to school. Right. Okay. I mean, Portland Public Schools opted out years ago on the yellow school buses. You know, and then they begin to close schools in the neighborhoods. Yep. Now these kids have to find a way to get farther away from home to get to school. And they wanted to put that burden on TriMet. And we had to explain to them, we can help you with bus passes, but we're not, uh, you know, we're not your transportation system to get these kids to school. We're going to incur costs yeah. by doing this, by providing That's you this it. service. But then right. what gets me, though, but remember this big push about the urban school here, this this particular this Portland Public Schools. All sorts of money was coming in. 
I, I, maybe I'm missing something. Went Port, to the Portland top. has much more of a tax base than thing. just yeah. about any other city in this state. Well, and he's, he's talking about transportation issues, right? I can think when I was reporting in Estacada a few years ago, yeah. uh, they had just done a bunch of mid-year budget huts where they're uh, right around Christmas time, right. right? They're laying off teachers. And then I go to a school board meeting right around that time. And they say, oh, by the way, we're going to have to replace almost our entire bus fleet because of these state mandates. Jesus. Uh, and we're still having similar issues right now in, in my boss's district out there in the rural areas mm -hmm. where they're running the risk of their buses not running because they're required to have biodiesel, which gels when it freezes outside. Right. Well, <laughs> so there's a completely different set of issues. And that, the cost of biodiesel is much higher than the cost of regular gasoline. So how right. do we how do we motivate and excite <laughs> the voting public out there that's hearing what we're talking about right now? I mean, well, we, we covered a lot of bases, a lot of things, whatever. Well, the problem. What do, what do we do? What should they do? The problem Tell is the general public don't have time. They think they're they things will be taken care of by the people they elect or place in these positions. And what we're finding out is those of us that do have time have to go not only in Clackamas County, but in Multnomah County and Washington County and all other counties where there's a problem to help out. I mean, we can't depend on, well, you and I, we're retired. Mm -hmm. But when we come to Scott, he's got to make a living every day. His check is not no, going to come. Too. Scott is retired. He, uh, not, I've been involuntarily you know, retired. His check, retired. Hey, wait, wrong guy. His check, his wrong check guy. is not going to come because he's Being sitting on the couch. Seat, <laughs> in this hot seat, I have to work every day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not going to come because he's sitting on the couch. Right, you're so right, we, though. You have so we right have to there. stay involved. Yeah, we have, right. You know, well, we can't get too old. That's right. That's right. You know, we have to continue to work. But he's right. This is why we're paying administrators these six-figure salaries to take care of basic things like, hey, is my kid not being poisoned by water in the schools? Right. And all we hear from them is, oh, gee, you should have yeah. given us more yeah. money. Oh, it's, it's nine outrageous. years. Uh, uh, 15 years ago, we knew about this problem. We it's just didn't really think it was any of your business. And, by the way, give us more money. I mean, that's yeah. poor customer service at the very least. It's well, malfeasance. Well, guys, look like we're going to, as you can see, we had to, we had to extend the time. It took some of your time off. But thank you very much. Take this take this message to the legislature, will you? Well, we're the ones that are ultimately going to have to foot the bill at that okay. level. There There's go. talk now there about, you, how, you know, the state funding, testing. for These are things you should be doing anyway. On that particular they, don't make, they don't make money. We pay taxes. We pay taxes, folks. Mm -hmm. That's the end of the deal. That's the end of the deal. We pay the taxes. Get out there and find out who in the hell is representing you. If, that, if, that's, if you want to change things, get out and vote. Get involved in this next time around. Have a good one. I'll see you next week.